Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Albion. We are in the uh, service corridor beneath the main deck on the Toronto. Let's go ahead and, uh, I guess get closer to this door. When the floor plate in front of the door is stepped on, it lights up. At the same time, the door opens. Oh. Okay. Guess I will use this. I don't think it has WASD. Nope, it doesn't. Kind of came a little bit later, I think. All right, looks like there's some uh, floor plates around here. Let's go ahead and uh, check the map. Yeah, I think that's what those are. The floor plate lights up. It's an interesting uh, system for Opening doors, I must say. After this floor plate lights up, the door on the west side of the room opens. You could say port or starboard. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Looks like another floor plate, one that may already be opened. There's something back here. A switch! Let's push that switch. This is kind of a tutorial dungeon, I think. Getting you used to some of the uh, puzzles in the uh, game. Interesting through here. Alright, so we've got two doors. One of which is see appears to already be open. Fluorescent light bulb. It radiates cold white light. Ah. Let's follow this robot. This is a service robot. It is performing an unknown task. Okay. So we're in here. Where are you going? Okay, yeah, you're going over here. Let's just keep following you. Why not? A good little buddy robot. Now where are you going? Is there anything else in here? Well, there is a switch over here. Uh, let's hold off on doing that. Let's follow uh, our little buddy robot. A bit more. The door tries to close, but stays open. Apparently a sensor is detecting a presence in the doorway. Yeah, probably me. Alright, so this robot may be moving through those areas. Um... We have a door over there, closed door. Red lights, maybe this one is the switch that we need to press for that. A noise came from the right. we go. Alright, we're in another room. Any switches on the walls or anything like that? I don't see anything. Let's keep going back through here. It looks like there's another door up here. And a switch. 
Yeah, this one has a, a green light and the other... Like, there's a green... It's green there and there's green lights there, so... I think that indicates what door it opens. So we need to find a red switch, like that one. There's a wall cabinet on the north wall. The wall cabinet is empty, ready to receive objects. Alright, I kind of feel like I may have missed something, because I think that might be the way out of this. Uh, no, not yet. Alright. So we don't, need, we don't need to do anything with the, uh, the wall cabinet at the moment. Let's go ahead and push the button. When the door with the red light opens, uh, the one with the green marking closes. The way back is blocked. Oh no. We can't get out. We're trapped. We're going to die in here. Mm, probably not. Can I look at these uh, lights? No, I can't. Uh, let's go ahead and check the map, though. So we've got a closed door there. Can't see too many other things. We have a... An alcove over here. Is there anything in the alcove? Doesn't look like it. Nothing down there. At least we can move through those pillars. Don't see anything here. All right, we got a bun bunch of uh, keypads. I guess we'll try uh, ten twenty four. Or 1042, I should say. I don't know why I keep switching that up. I think it's because 1024 is uh, a bite. Or a bit, or whatever. Apparently the number combination was correct. The door beside the keypad is opened. Doesn't look like there's anything else in here. Sorry, I'm blanking on the proper term. I know what it is, but... Uh, let's see, we've got a, a semi... Oh, semi-transparent walls mark a service access. The ladder in the middle goes up. Do I just move up to the ladder, or...? I do. This is the comm room. Tom carefully looks... Uh, Tom looks around carefully, but no one is here. The odor of scorched electronic equipment hangs in the air. Alright, well, do we have anything uh, there? Nope. Why is there ta a table with uh, a cup and a plate and stuff on it? Not, well, that, that does look uh, pretty nasty. It looks like they've already cleaned up Beagle, though. Fragments of the destroyed comm unit. An armchair. And we've got a cabinet here. Stim drinks, a special mixture of potent medications. Don't mind if I do. I'll take all that. A control panel. Can't uh, interact with that in any way. Can't get over there. Can't open those doors. I don't want to leave, because uh, that would be very suspicious. Pretty sure there's something else around here. Oh! You, you you were clipping underneath the floor there for a second. 
These are the remains of the comm room. The explosion must have been devastating. Tom is just about to turn away when he notices an object under the destroyed console. It is a weapon! How in the world did th this gun get here? Except for security, weapons are strictly forbidden on board. An interesting find in any case. Alright, so we got uh, eight canisters. Take those. Where are my... there they are. So I got 19 now. And we have a pistol. Long range weapon, a 2600G. Weight, 30 damage, protection zero, can be used by pilot, scientist, and technician. Let's go ahead and take that. Alright, well, uh, weapons are strictly forbidden on board, so that probably means something bad might happen if I leave with this. Let's see what happens. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hi. The security officers' faces show concern, then anger when they see someone walk out of the secured area. Stay right there, Driscoll. How did you get into that blocked off area? Don't move. We're going to search you. Colonel Priver searches Tom. A weapon. Driscoll, are you crazy? This is going to be marked in your personal records. You can count on that. Get out of here. You will be hearing from us. Colonel Priver confiscates the weapon. No, not my weapon. And my ammo. That's terrible. So how can we, uh... How can we preserve our weapon? Well, there was that, uh, that cabinet. That wall cabinet that we saw earlier. There we go. Let's go ahead and make our way back there. I need to look to see if there are any uh, keyboard shortcuts. And you can't move on this map, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so we want to yeah, open chest. We want to get back up there. But we can't get back through that door, but we were able to get in here. From the other uh, direction. So, we just need to do a bit of a roundabout route. Go ahead and leave these here. Tom deposits the weapon in the wall cabinet. So, now, if I can get back to the cabinet from the other side of this lock, then I can fool the security guards and the weapon belongs to me. Tom has achieved level 5, life points 20, additional training points 6, tax for round 1. Hey, alright, I got experience. Nice. Alright. Let's head back up. Nope. That wasn't it. You know, just walking backwards as you do. Doesn't everyone do that? I, I know, I, I do that all the time. Nope, wrong button. Alright, well, let's go ahead and leave. Alright, you're gonna search me. Colonel Priver searches Tom. Okay, you can go now. But be certain that we'll make note of this incident in your personal records. I can promise you that. Well, now that's just mean. What have I done? What have I done besides getting into a secured area? Just to get a piece of valuable weaponry. No, I have not seen the pilot of the Omega Resnovi. Alrighty. Uh, all these are still lit up. All the doors are still open. So I can't go back through that one. So I gotta follow you back through here. I'm 
just rub my face up against the door until it's opened. Look at those beautiful pixels. Alright, rub my face up against this, uh... This one again. So many beautiful pixels. Hurry up, robot. Robot. Hurry up. Thank you. Alright. Back around here. I'm push the button. Helps if I hit the right button. On my mouse. And here we are. Take the gun. And take the ammo. Now, we don't have a whole lot of that, so it'd be nice to find, like, a melee weapon as well. And now we just go backwards. Alright, just wait until, uh... The robot comes through again. So many beautiful pixels. I do love some pixels. Alright. We are out. We are almost home free. Go back through here. Alright. Alright. I wonder if Joe has anything to say to us. Oh. Well, have you seen anything interesting? Well, the overseas comm unit looks real bad. Guess what I found? Guess what? I found a gun there. Wow, don't, don't show that thing to anybody or they'll take it from you immediately. Uh, what can you say about... Gun? I don't understand that. Oh, okay. Take a look at, uh, the gun. A gun. You know you're gonna be in big trouble if security finds you with that. You better not tell anyone about that thing. Oh, I know. Alright, see you soon. Take care, Tom. Okay, at this point, uh, I think that we are ready to go. So, let's go. Let's launch. Tom goes to the console and reports that he is ready for the launch shortly thereafter in the shuttle hangar. Hi, folks. I may have missed one or two people that I could talk to, but I think it'll be okay. Tom meets Captain Brandt, his passenger, Rainer Hofstede, and the android body of Ned, the AI system of the ship, near the shuttle. Okay, Driscoll, everything is ready for your flight. All data required for course determination are available to you in the shuttle systems, Mr. Driscoll. During the flight, I will communicate directly with you so we can immediately evaluate the transmitted data. You know your orders. Carry out measurements in orbit and on-site to verify the probe data. Get Mr. Hofstede down safely, Driscoll. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. Are you ready, Hofstede? Sure, step on it, Driscoll. Tom brings the shuttle safely out of the mothership. The little spaceship has a powerful engine and they are near the target planet after only a couple of hours. Oh god! Oh god, it's cut away! You're, we're gonna- we're all gonna die! It was a pleasant trip up to now, Driscoll. Thank you. I'm in just the right mood to fly today. There's a lot of routine in my job, but flying to a new planet is always exciting. You could say that again. It's a good thing my office doesn't know, but I would have given up a week's pay just to experience this moment. Oh, well, it's a good thing I recorded this, then. Well, we're coming into visual range. Look, Hofstede, it doesn't look like a desert world to me. I mean, it kind of looks like Venus. Hey, 
Indeed, there's a lot of clouds, and the color is quite unusual for dust clouds, especially when you consider that the gold color comes from the sun. I'll be speaking with the Toronto. Meanwhile, try to get something on your instruments. Shuttle to Toronto. Ned, how's the contact? The reception is excellent, Mr. Driscoll. Are you in visual contact with the target now? Yes, but the planet does not really look like a desert. Mr. Hofstad is checking the instruments right now. Inter... Uh, oh, I... Uh, con is becoming weak, but continue. The dense cloud cover is making measurements difficult. The analysis does show large amounts of raw materials. There appears to be more water than we originally assumed. One moment, Mr. Hofstad. Uh, con is becoming weaker. Are you having any diff... Mr. Driscoll? No, everything looks okay here. Well, I shouldn't have said that. The servos are gone. The auxiliary systems are going down. I'm trying to do something manual. Hofstad? I'm trying to run a check. Mr. Driscoll, your status shows critical values. Report, please. Failure of several systems. Manual control okay. Trying to turn around. We have problems with the energy supply. Uh, hey! Oh, that doesn't seem good. It exploded. Oh no, I'm losing control. Hofstad, hold tight. We're going down! The shuttle gets caught in the planet's gravitational field and quickly starts to fall towards it. The little ship is rocked heavily as it enters the atmosphere. We shouldn't have gone on that three-hour tour! Tom works feverishly to make a crash landing with only the manual controls. Slowly, the men come to. Oh, my head. I'm sure in no hurry to fly with you again, Driscoll. Certainly not with this shuttle. But hey, you're alive. I saved your life. Nevertheless, you can thank me for your, for your still being alive. The automatic controls wouldn't have brought this thing down safely. Okay, okay, I get it. What do we do now? Now we put on our put our masks on put on our masks and climb out. Hey, and they're going to practice social distancing too after that, I'm sure. If we can breathe the air, we'll go through the supplies and work on the radio, see if we can make contact. If the air is too thin, that'll be all she wrote. Oh dear. Well, there's no purpose in delaying it. Let's go. This seems pretty deserty to me. My god! So this is the desert world. I must be out of my mind. Just look around! Fantastic. Just smell. Listen. This place is humming with life. How could the probe have sent such data? This is a real sensation. First, let's get away from the shuttle. And this oxygen-rich atmosphere could... Everything around Tom bursts into light, then into darkness. That remains for a long time. Then Tom begins to dream his dream again. Well, I'm sure that this was just a simple systems malfunction, right? Right? Well... I hope you guys have been revved up like a deuce. Another runner in the night. Uh, let dream again. I have to discuss it with Chris sometime. Time to wake up. Must prepare for the flight. The flight. The shuttle. It was already there. It has already happened. Pain. Something is wrong. Something isn't right. More pain. What happened? God, the crash. Uh, what happened? Oh, the pain. Why don't I wake up? Hofstede and I are going out. I'm all full of plants and animals. The planet is alive. The colors, the greens, everything is green. I do like green. Oh, hi. Yeah, I suppose I might have... should have mentioned that. Cerniac, Ribenis, Anrige, Greenard, Drebisir, Renid. What in the world? Where am I? Who... What is that? I, I thought I was awake. Oh, I have to get up. Oh, damn. Yeah, quite a clear sign of recovery, I'd say. Welcome back among the living.
Hofstad! Okay, okay, I'll try to put it simply. What happened? Do you remember the crash landing and our getting out? Good. Shortly after the shuttle exploded, like in a bad American television show. My first memory after that is being transported on a stretcher. When I saw who was helping me, I immediately passed out again. Driscoll, these beings are intelligent! I, I gathered that by the fact that she was talking. I can see that this house didn't grow out of the ground. Although, if you look at it more carefully... You don't understand! There's intelligent life here! We've made contact with the th third non-human race! Their culture is fantastic and... Hofstad, please! My head is spinning even without your attempts at explanation. And... Oh, Barrett still has my Advil! Start from the beginning, for goodness sake. How could the instruments be so wrong? We set out with breathing masks expecting a Mars-like world, and end up in a damn jungle more dense than anything on Earth. I have no idea what went wrong. You can feel most of the facts with your own body. We find ourselves in an oxygen-rich, warm world with an enormous variety of flora and fauna. The gravity, as expected, is a bit under 1G. Up to now, our immune system has handled the local microorganisms. The explosion got more than me. Got, got you more than me. You've been unconscious for almost 30 days. Dang. Stop, don't even try it. You shouldn't even... You shouldn't try to stand for at least another 30 days. Oh, I've noticed. Is anything else wrong with me? I don't think so. Some broken bones, burns, probably minor internal injuries. The head injury gave me the most concern, but you appear to be completely coherent. Your prosthesis, prosthesis is operational. Thank you. Continue. I was back on my feet quite quickly and have made contact with our hosts. Where shall I begin? You're a scientist. Just stick to the facts. I'll try to my best. The people here call themselves Iskai. As you've seen, they're built like humans, only taller and thinner. Also, they still have all their body fur. They appear to have descended from beasts of prey, as you can tell from the shape of their head. Otherwise, their history runs somewhat parallel to that of Homo sapiens. The Sky are mammals with two sexes just like us. Their technology isn't too advanced, yet they are quite capable of astounding architectural feats. The people that live here have taken good care of us, and they've helped me, me keep you alive. Does that mean some kind of medicine man cured me? No, on the other hand, who knows? I was completely out of it for the fir for our first day here. The only thing I can remember is that one of these fellows was in the room and fumbled around with us a bit. I don't think he was trying to impress us with some kind of hocus-pocus. He was working with glittering plant seeds. I was too weak to protest against it, but apparently it didn't hurt us. Then I used three of our medipacks to get you to, to your current state. Trenisbat Adriba Nagendi? Kredak Grina, ah, uh, Strakiri, Badri. Pishwan Drobi Lenari. I can see you haven't wasted your time. You've learned their language in just four weeks. Oh, I only know a couple of words. Except for the pronunciation, the dialect is astoundingly easy to learn. I'll give you a basic course during the next few days so that you can catch up. Uh, do it slowly, Hofstad. I'm still trying to absorb all this. And Barrett still has my Advil. This situation is... I mean... What we are experiencing here is unbelievable. In real life, things like this don't just happen to normal people. <laughs> Be quiet, Driscoll. I'm sure anyone who has experienced something that only happens in movies would feel the same way. After all, this is a video game. But this is really happening. Accept it, and you'll see... It. You'll see that you'll be on your feet in no time. Then we must find a way to get back to the ship. The ship, right. Ugh. I'd be really surprised if it is still in orbit. I think it will land at the predetermined point. From there, we can build a research station instead of a mining structure. That way your company can at least make some money on the exclusive rights to the first documentary. I must find out where we are and how we can get back to the landing point. Since our shuttle has been destroyed beyond repair, the trip to the Toronto could take a long time. That's right. But first, we have to learn to communicate. Sleep for a while. Then we'll be... Then we'll begin the first lesson. Okay. And Hofstede? Yes? Thank you for everything. Several weeks later, Tom has recovered. I eh, still have a few hit points missing. And has learned the basics of the Iskai language with Rainer's help. Today, for the first time, he feels strong enough to get out of bed. Never, Hofstede, and even if Giria eats me, I won't stay in the sandbox a day longer. Your nurse surely won't be happy about that, but please, take it easy. It looks as like you will... Looks as if you will be walking again shortly. I'm doing okay, aren't I? 
It's time to finally leave this room. Okay, but you talk to Giria. Alright. And we have a party member. I'm still low on hit points. We have a hand towel. Let's go ahead and take that. This bottle contains an aromatic liquid. I will definitely take that. A container. I will take that. Take everything that isn't nailed down. This bottle contains an aromatic liquid. I, I think I could... It was, like, read it out for take because I couldn't get to it or something. Let's see. Oh, no space left. I guess that would do it. All right. Let's get some stuff over to Rainer. I know at least one of these items will sell for a, an awful lot here. A bucket. I'll go ahead and take that. A chest. Yeah, it's good to know what the chests look like. Let's manipulate it. We have some rope. Uh, we have a stab. Close range weapon. Damage 3. 300G. Can be used by pilot, scientist, warrior, Gikos mage, druid, warrior, Okulo Kamulos, technician, and enlightened one. Well, we probably do want a weapon. So, and I'd rather not use my guns at the moment. A large cabinet. Let's go ahead and manipulate this. I put all the equipment that I still had with me in here. Alright. Got some, uh, stim drinks. Is that all you had, Rainer? Oh, he also had, uh, rations. Let's go ahead and give uh, some to him. All right, so he's at 30. Tom, I think, was at 32, so that should be fine. Short dagger, dagger, a large dagger, torches. Let's go ahead and take the torches for sure. Got 12.0 gold. Go ahead and take that. All right, so let's uh, take a look at these. Uh, four damage. Three damage. And two damage. I don't know if we can dual wield. Doesn't look like it. All right, you take that. Well, we got some uh, spare daggers. I mean, this does the same damage. It's a little bit lighter. Eh, we'll just use that anyway. Alright. Ready to fight our way free. Oh, right. Let's go ahead and take that. There we go. All right. Well, we'll have to uh, take a look around at some more of this stuff next time. We've got a water basin. Now, the water channels probably serve for the drinking water supply. They run through the house like small brooks. It's pretty interesting. Got lots of uh, interesting furniture here. Don't need to rest. Got some uh, herbaceous plants. I'm not sure if we can take any of these. I might uh, take a look in between episodes to see if we can. But when we come back next time, let's wander around and explore this new world. See you then, everyone.